Thank you. Uh, I think what we're going to do is this is a very interesting topic. I think it'll be great for all of us to sort of give a two-minute take on our views on the topic. Let's start with you, Arvind. Your your thoughts on the topic. Thanks, Vivek. Am I audible? Uh, I think the topic is very apt. Uh, it's very important for marketeers uh, to take control of the narrative as far as the long-term business growth aspirations is concerned. Uh, while one always delivers to the short-term uh, part of the uh, uh, you know re uh, business requirements for the month and for the quarter, but how to build a sustainable brand? How to build a brand that delivers on the business goals consistently? I think that's the task for marketeers uh, and and to do to that one has to be fairly consistent in terms of a brand positioning uh, but also renewing the brand from time to time to make it relevant uh, to today's conditions uh, but it doesn't just mean advertising right for example in the McDonald's uh, example uh, it's also about consistent experience uh, because that builds brand as much as uh, all the other marketing efforts do so I think consistency in terms of positioning and experience is the bedrock for uh, long-term business growth uh, but also I would emphasize the fact that how can the brand keep reaching new consumers or light consumers because in the end most of the categories that we're talking about are under penetrated right eight percent fifteen percent penetration levels in a very large market like India so in the Indian context it's all about growing penetration so reaching light buyers new buyers is always a key imperative apart from you know converting the high intent consumers to today's sales uh, and uh, and how can we be consistent on that uh, but but also important is building a business case for the various stakeholders. Uh, for example, in today's soft demand uh, conditions, right, high inflationary conditions, uh, marketeers are on the spot to demonstrate ROI from their long-term marketing efforts. Uh, I think then it's very important. I think there was a question in the earlier session also, uh, how to demonstrate the linkage to sales. Uh, and I, that's a very important linkage, be it through attribution, be it through incrementality. Uh, how can marketers demonstrate to the various business holders that long-term you know, business, uh, long-term marketing efforts do land on the business outcomes uh, consistently? Uh, I think those are my top-level takes on this topic. So I think I'd like to share two examples about McDonald's, right? So the first example is that when the McDonald's opened on Linking Road, the first store, they sold 150,000 burgers on the first day. The thing was not that they sold one and a half lakh burgers, but they prepared for it. Second thing, I think the research has shown that I think it's the most consistent brand in terms of experience. Every time when you have a McDonald's fries or whatever, right, globally, wherever you want to eat it, it's going to be exactly the same. And I think that's what has allowed it to become one of the largest brands in the world. Absolutely, right? Vivek. You, you can't go wrong, right? I mean, uh, you know that you expect something and you get that time after time. I think that's how great brands are Absolutely. built. Deba, would love to have your views on the topic. Yeah, thanks, Vivek. I think Vivek and me were having a discussion before the panel started about uh, these two adjectives which we are talking about. Uh, very close to each other. And I couldn't be in a better place to talk about being persistent. Because in this room, there are many people, I see a very young audience over here, and there are many people who would not know that I belong to a brand which is almost 68 years old. Now, there's something which we have done over a period of time which makes us still sell, right? Which makes us still be relevant to you guys. Perhaps one of, uh, some of your grandfathers bought one of our products many years back. Perhaps our parents bought one of our products many years back. And perhaps today, you still aspire to buy one of our products as on date. So, I think I'll keep the Tata story separate because I think Harish Bhatt is here in the second half to talk you through the Tata story. But as far as Voltas is concerned, I think we have been uh, a warrior across many generations. And what we did was to just to refresh the business cycle in an interesting way so that we are relevant to our end user uh, decade after decade. I think if a brand looks at persistence, it should look at where I should be 10 years from now. That's about persistence. If a brand needs to look at being consistent, it's about the present. You need to be consistent in your business offerings, in your propositions, in your messaging, in your after-sales service, in the entire life cycle, which 
the consumer faces you with. So for us, it's more about longevity vis-a-vis uh, -vis being persistent, and it's more about uh, being relevant when it comes to being consistent. Uh, however, I would also emphasize on the fact that refresh yourself. Uh, Keep in mind that the consumer is changing, the touch points are changing, and your stakeholders are changing. It's not only about the end user, it's also about your other stakeholders. Is your brand adding value to your share for your shareholders? Are you creating value for the organization? So that's where being persistent comes in more than being consistent, because in the long run, you need to satisfy your other stakeholders also. And I don't think marketeers need to restrict themselves to only the end user today. Because whatever you do has a bearing on your value of the organization, on your market cap, and long-term returns. So keep that in mind, and keep the business in mind, because without a consistent or a persistent business, you don't have a brand. So I would urge all the marketeers over here to always remember that if there is no business which is sustainable, or profitable, there is no brand. Thanks, you, Andiba. One quick uh, thing for the sound guy out here: there is some sitar playing on our head. If somebody can shut it off, it'll be it'll be appreciated. But you know, one of the things I was discussing with you, right, that a lot of times when you are part of Tata as a brand, you would wear it on your sleeve all the time, and you make it Tata Volta, so whatever X Y Z. But it's just amazing that. Actually, the consistency and persistency of the brand has been so strong, it's almost as big a brand in its own space that you don't, need the, uh, you don't feel the need to use it uh, at all points of thing, only at the buying consideration phases when you, want, you feel it's worth using it, right? That itself speaks a lot about the Voltas brand, per se. Yes, we use, we use the, uh, the Tata parentage very strategically when you come to a decision-making journey where it's a brand choice. So we ensure that the consumer gets reassured of the fact that he's buying a Tata product. That's very important for us. Uh, however, before that, in terms of consideration, awareness, equity, uh, uh, touch points, Voltas is a powerful brand in the CDIT business we are in. And we have come across various instances where we, have, we had the opportunity to get into multiple product categories but we chose to be uh, in, in certain domain where we feel we are relevant as a brand to our customers. Okay, awesome. Neha, would love to have your views on the topic. Thank you, uh, Vivek. So, um, <clears throat> when I look at the two words, consistency and persistency, if I look at those two words, I think for me, the synonymity uh, holds true for consistency to go with trust. You know, and Mahindra as an organization has been around for nearly over 75 years now. So trust for us uh, is absolutely critical and I would say that kind of goes really well with the word. Uh, you know, how do you remain consistent in a way that your customers, consumers have that trust in you? And I think when I look at the word persistent, uh, I think for me the word that stands out to simplify it would be relevance. So how do you, uh, you know, put your brand out or your message out, which is absolutely relevant to the here and now? So one is slightly long term, and the other is more from a short term here and now. And a combination of two is really the winning formula. Uh, that's how I kind of, uh, you know, uh, look at it. And when I look at consistency, it's not just in the quality of products that you put out there. It's also the, the value and the DNA of the organization and the authenticity of the organization uh, you know, that, that people experience through the years, especially if it's been a brand that has been uh, you know, there for long. So it's, it's not really, uh, you know, when I talk about persistency, it could be a, uh, you know, a product proposition, whereas when I look at consistency, you know, customers are experiencing your brand much over the product as well. And so it, it, it's kind of a responsibility of the brand on if you want to really create that trust, how do you look at a 360 on how the brand is engaging with the customer, how the people representing the brand are engaging with the customer, and that's what will kind of also build in the consistency along with the, the product offering that you have. 
So I think both are absolutely critical, uh, you know, as, as we build brands. That's so true. You know, I've seen all the initiatives of Mahinda Group. They have been similar initiatives or the same initiatives for extended period of time. Whether it's the Mahinda Blues Festival or its rise or dominating the SUV category. And the thing is, I think it really represents that over 30, 40, 50 year period, how can you have consistency and persistence? And it's just amazing. So over to you, Sneha. Would love to have your views. Uh, so good afternoon, everyone. Uh, can everybody hear me at the back? Yeah. OK. So I actually represent the youngest brand on this panel, right? So let me give you a slightly different take on how young brands look at this consistent versus uh, persistent debate. But before that, you know, as a marketer, I've had a very, very solid belief that I've lived with forever, right? I always say brands are like people. Would you like to know a person who is X today and Y tomorrow and Z the day after? No, right? You'll call them schizophrenic, actually, right? The same applies to a brand. You cannot be a brand if you are not consistent because then you are just a schizophrenic personality that's floating around in the world of marketing, right? So I don't think it is a consistent versus persistent debate. You have to be consistent. I mean, just like as people, we have to be consistent. As brands, we have to be consultant, right? But think about it like this. As people, we evolve. That's what brands need to do. As people, we sometimes go out of our comfort zone and surprise everyone. That's exactly what brands need to do. Coming to the persistent point of view, I think the way young brands like us look at it, persistency is actually an expensive marketing route, right? And when you are young, you are actually first trying to find out what is my consistent message that brings people to me, right? That really warms their heart, that attaches them with me. And once I figured that out, then I go back and decide, listen, do I need to be over persistent to drive this? Or is the messaging and the consistency doing the job of, uh, uh, you know, getting me to more and more customers and building those very deep customer relationships, right? So as young brands, I don't think we, uh, persistency is too much of an option for us. We have to be consistent, but we have to really, really deliver on that consistency. Like Neha said, everything from your product to how the executive is delivering the product to your customer service, to your website, to your social media, right? Uh, even the kind of influencers you work with, right? I mean, if you are a brand who's standing for X and if the influencer is not standing for that, it's, it's a bad investment to make. So I think young brands have to be consistent. Of course, at some stage in their life, they get to a stage where they also need to start being persistent because they just need to reach more people, right? So that's how I look at this debate and also from the perspective of being, like I said, probably the youngest brand on this uh, panel. Well, that's so true. I think if you look at it, brands were generally built over 50, 100 years. But I think that is changing. If you take some of the new brands that have been like, like cred is less than five years old and most of us would have heard of cred, right? So I think that is changing. That also is a very interesting take we can discuss when we are having a thing. Sai, over to you, yeah. Yeah, uh, thank you everyone. Um, so um, I think in, the, in, the, in this group, I uh, work in the most uh, complex and in a slightly uh, boring category, uh, which is <laughs> insurance. But uh, you know, if you, but one thing, you know, if you ever opened uh, our app or our website, you will never complain us of not being persistent. So we are very persistent. <laughs> so, so, but jokes apart, but uh, we persist, uh, the, the, the fact is that, you know, it's a very complex category, uh, you know, insurance and uh, um, it, 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 does, it, it requires a certain amount of uh, persuasion uh, because uh, no one actually wakes up in the morning thinking about insurance or as a matter of fact, the, people don't think about uh, our category that much. Um, so that makes it extremely important for us to be very, very consistent in uh, uh, what we are propagating. Like, for example, our core is, you know, talking about protection as a category, like building that category, which is term insurance and health insurance. We, like, literally build that category. Uh, and also be persistent, uh, which is to kind of, you know, keep, uh, even if you are not interested, 
at some point of time we have to just keep explaining because you know the moment of truth for you can be at any moment and and it's a category where you know a lot of times you uh, you think about this category when something happens to someone in the close family or someone else so that's when you think about this category so uh, so for us at least uh, you know uh, for policy bizarre we've been uh, from day one we've been very very focused uh, and committed to build a long term brand um and with you know despite uh, despite not having maybe uh, deep pockets in the beginning but we we always felt that you know building a brand building a category is uh, super critical for our category um, the reason being that uh, uh, no one thinks about us uh, our category uh, so therefore you know we have to be consistent and uh, and for us persistency comes from the fact that you know how well we are able to talk about the category truths uh so so that you know uh, when the when when the category is coming in the consideration uh we are pretty much uh are the brand uh, considered so you know so that's that's pretty much uh, you know how i look uh, you know we look at uh, you know um, consistency and persistency again like uh, all my fellow panelists have shared that you know it can't be either or or uh, it needs to be both but yeah it needs to be kind of uh, it, it it needs to be there it's like you know uh in a cricket team you can't say that you know you'll have a, only a 11 players of bowlers or batsmen you need you need to have a mix of a healthy mix of uh, team yeah so I, i think i can guarantee you anybody who has any doubts on your persistency has to fill up a lead on policy bazaar that's exactly <laughs> what i said <laughs> if you have ever opened a app you would know what persistency means yeah over to you super take would love to have your views here good afternoon everybody and e for m thanks for having us here uh, you know what is the problem of being the last speaker in the panel like i had five set of thoughts to talk about what is consistency and persistency now by the time sai had spoken all the five that tick mark so i don't have any point to add uh, but on a on a on a serious note uh, the way i look at consistency and persistency is what brand does in terms of both back end and front end in terms of the communication in terms of the look and feel in terms of creating the brand grammar that is primarily is the consistency you keep on having a, a particular insight based truth which you keep on helping to the consumer and as neha was talking about you don't change that because as an individual also you don't change so the consistency comes from that and then i remember one quote of roberto gogeta who was an iconic coca cola ceo he said that anything white on red should be red as coca cola so that comes from the consistency okay persistency is is a little bit different in my uh uh vocabulary in a sense that persistency is something when you you need to be persistent when you face a challenge as a marketer we face multiple challenges like you can be consistent big brands are consistent but small or medium brands they need challenge they meet sometimes face the challenge of a budget maybe a culture issue maybe a media penetration issue and how do you navigate through those things that is when the persistency comes in i'll give a very non marketing example like you do morning work in the morning 6 to 7 that is consistency every day you go for morning work and you have a morning flight to catch and then on that day what do you do you can surrender your work or you can do an evening work now see the point that doing the evening work is a is a symbol of persistency so you sacrifice the morning part of the consistency but you retain the work part of the thing am i making sense that okay there is two part of a consistency so consistency works on two axes one is the time axis and one is the platform axis like time axis that over a certain period of time i will give a consistent message and on the on the interface axis be it tv be it print be it digital be it merchandising material i'll give the same message across so that is where the difference between consistency and persistency in my mind that when you keep on doing same thing in a normal time frame is okay but when you face a challenge and then you still keep on doing that that is persistency so in a way uh, persistency is the kind of acid test for consistency 
No, that's wonderful, uh, Supratik. I think my take on this topic is, right, I think there's always this, Ben Evans has said that there's always a time in the world when the whole world gets reset. And to a certain extent, like, sort of generative AI is resetting the world. And the biggest challenge for us as brand marketeers was that we had to be consistent because, just imagine, right, that we had to communicate the same brand property to 100 million people. Now the thing is, there is an opportunity that you can actually take psychographics or a million each and create 100 audiences and every person may have a different sort of consumption behavior of our brands. So do we communicate the speed of a Ferrari to every single person who wants to buy it or do you want to communicate the safety features of Ferrari to the spouse who, whose husband is going to buy it? Right? So the fact of the matter is now for some brands, maybe aspirational to some people, but some brands who are higher net worth, maybe uh, value for money, the same brand. Right? The thing is, the challenge we're going to go through now as brand marketers is that the psychographics of our users is changing. And now we have this unique ability to communicate with each one of those segments slightly differently. And I think that's going to be very interesting of how do we tackle it. And do we make some changes? Is this something that's really resetting the world or is just uh, some more new wine in an old bottle, right? So, 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 so uh, yeah, sorry. Yeah, so Vivek, I'll just add to that, right? Of course, the world is changing, right? The demographic is changing. The question is, is everybody becoming way more unique? I think that's more in people's head, right? If you really look closely, large cohorts of people are still very homogeneous. Right? If you put clusters of X, Zen Z, with X education, X location, they largely behave in a similar manner, right? However, the self-image is that, oh, I'm very, I'm the most unique person that, that exists, right? And I think that's, that's something that we marketers need to really understand very quickly. Otherwise, we can go all over the place with personalization when it's actually not needed, right? So it should not be personalization for the sake of personalization because ultimately we are all humans, right? Social animals need to belong to a, com like community is becoming such a big thing. It's just that it's now online. People want to belong to a community. That's so, Susneha, I think, let's say I'll agree to disagree. It's like, you know, somebody asked me that, oh, you are a consumer intelligence platform. It's like, how are you different? I say, yeah, yeah, I'm completely different like the 700 others that are there. <laughs> we all believe we're different, right? So the thing is, see, when the thing is that today Facebook tracks 1.2 million interests, the combination of 1.2 million interests that somebody consumes is different per cohort, right? Yeah. But yeah, does everybody like food? Yeah, but in food, Korean cuisine and Japanese cuisine and to a certain extent, it, when you go down to that 1.2 million interest, then all of us are very different and that's where the challenge is going to be. Can we customize our messaging with each one of them? But this time, Supratik, I'm going to start with you, right? <laughs> so that you have the first thing to add, right? So what do you think are the fundamentals of consistent marketing and on the strategy front, how does one actually build that? Yeah. Fundamentally, uh, see, I come from FMCG food, OTC background, and uh, so I would speak from that experience only. Fundamentally, you, the starting point is that you need to have a good product which addresses a particular need of a consumer. That is fundamental. You cannot change that. If it, it is not fulfilling a certain aspect of a need of a consumer, uh, the product Whatever you do around marketing, it will not sail through. The second part is basically understanding the insight around that particular need and then translating that insight into a communication. I'm talking about a classical marketing, but uh, I, I, I love classical marketing. I propagate classical marketing because I think fundamentally it's, it's, it's there. You cannot challenge classical marketing. But the main point comes where, as a marketeer, we mistake consistency with, with a singular messaging. I think consistency doesn't mean that you'll have to bore your consumer to the death with the same single message. <laughs> and today, in the, in, the, in the era of digital and social media, I think, uh, like we are having between Vivek and Sneha, they are talking about customization. Today, there is a large pool of urban smart TVs which makes each TV 
an addressable TV. Like today, if there is a match happening, Vivek can see a different ad, I can see a different ad, depending on what cohort I am into. Okay. It's not like the earlier days, which is a linear TV, where if a particular KBC or something is going on, if there is an ad coming, all of us are seeing, if that we are switching on to that program, all of us are seeing the same advertisement. Today it has changed. That connected TV and addressable TV has changed it. So you can customize what Sneha would see and what Neha would see. Okay. No pun intended. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, so that's where I think uh, the challenge and, and the opportunity of, uh, of, of consistency coming in. I would say just I would finish my thought is that See, I was thinking that what is a very classic example of consistent and persistent brand. Uh, I think Amul, as a template, has created an excellent consistent brand. Globally, it could be one of the best consistent brand. Those day-to-day -day things which they pick up as a part of their communication, uh, be it Banga being the <coughs> World Bank CEO or something like that, or Virat Kohli doing the centuries, anything which happens around the world. It immediately taken up as an Amul creative. And that template, so it's not boring, but it is very consistent. So they keep on changing the creative. Look at the persistency angle also. So 15, 20 years back, uh, when we started our career, maybe not all of us, but some of us, Amul used to take that communication primarily through outdoors holdings. Now, uh, now they are taking it through the digital media. So they have understood that, okay, I need to adapt the medium of communication. So that has given a lot of flexibility also. So suppose if you do an outdoor oriented, that kind of consistent communication, outdoor requires a little bit more time to change. In digital, you can change overnight. So it has given a flexibility. On the other hand, it has made them on a kind of thing that it had given them a flexibility at the same time that it had thrown a challenge to them that how would you remain consistent continuously. So that's the classic example of how do you balance consistent and persistent using both the message content, the template of the message is same, but it changes. At the same time, the medium and other challenges which are been thrown at to them, they're adapting to those kind of things. So that's basically a classic example of uh, and, and the fundamentals of consistent and, uh, and persistent is that you need a strong insight and around that insight you start playing and persistent is that how to navigate around the challenges when you deliver those, in, uh, those insights as a communication capsule. Yes, I think that's a great example, Amol, and I think on digital they can actually have an amazing play on it, right? They could actually have creative for each sort of day and depending on the regions, they are existent in using a DALI or an open AI or ChatGPT, they can actually generate this at scale very, very quickly. Awesome. So Sai, over to you. I think uh, one of the things we were talking about is that that uh, earlier sort of insurance was sold, but it was not bought. Policy Bazaar you know, single-handedly has changed that. would love to know your thoughts on what has gone about uh, to achieve that objective. Yeah, I think, you know, um like I uh, spoke earlier, that uh, uh, insurance was always. I, I remember uh, before uh, Policy Bazaar, I was in a offline insurance uh, company, and then at that point of time, you know, um, uh, our sales head used to come and uh, tell me that you know, whatever. Sai, to koi bhi marketing kar le, insurance hum bechte hain. We sell insurance. It's not bought. So you know, it was it was always a very you know, a heart-wrenching <laughs> movement for a marketeer. Uh, but, uh, but I think to an extent it was true because, you know, it was, the category was pretty much a push category. Uh, but, uh, um, you know, with, uh, and, and also when, when I was moving to uh, Policy Bazaar around eight, eight, eight and a half years back, uh, I was also questioned that, you know, that what will you do as a marketeer in a publisher kind of a space? Uh, at that point of time, it was that. Uh, but, um, but I think, you know, there was a, clear problem statement uh, that uh, we were solving in the consumer's life, which is that, you know, if you, if you go online, if you buy, uh, buy online, if you compare, you will end up buying the right product. It's as simple as that because, you know, uh, offline, it 
it, you, uh, people tend to sell the product that is good for them, not for you. Whereas, you know, when you compare, you buy the product, the right product for yourself. And somewhere we kind of, you know, believed that, you know, it is, it's absolutely in the interest of consumer to buy, uh, buy themselves rather than uh, being, uh, being pushed to uh, buy. And that kind of, you know, that, that, that entire mentality uh, kind of, you know, changed the way, uh, you know, the category uh, started uh, behaving and the consumer started behaving. And, you know, uh, initially we got a lot of traffic. But we also understood that, you know, uh, at the end of the day, what you get, like for example, uh, my friends in the panel uh, have interesting brands. Like you go to McDonald's, you you know, you like to click a selfie with it. But have you ever seen someone clicking a selfie with an insurance policy document? I don't think anyone has ever done that. So our, our the only consumer experience is the moment of truth, which is uh, if someone passes away or a health claim. So uh, I think so after being, uh, after, you know, kind of, you know, uh, being a portal where you can compare, uh, very soon we felt that, you know, if we can't give a great experience at the moment of truth, then the entire product fails. So, so you know, that's why, you know, we kind of, you know, pivoted our entire uh, energies in, uh, in, in providing better uh, experience at maybe uh, when a customer is at the hospital, like we have dedicated claim support team. Uh, we work along with uh, uh, insurers, but uh, the face of the dedicated uh, claim support is a PB uh, policy bazaar guy. And same goes for uh, any other product. So, you know, uh, it's, 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 it's again, you know, you know, if I have to weave this into a consistent and persistent uh, uh, debate, it's pretty much that, you know, how you, s how you are able to solve a consumer problem uh, consistently over a period of time and be persistent with the uh, the fact that you know the, the 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 what the the truth of the product is so that's that's pretty much the uh, story here you know so i have i've sold insurance for 15 years and i remember how the sales guys used to treat us beginning when you should generate leads very very condescendingly and then overall they became dependent on the leads that we should generate and at the moment of truth you talk about is like i was told that if you really want to understand what life insurance is all about, you have to go and give the deliverer the check when something has happened, you're reimbursing a claim, then you actually know the difference you're making in somebody's life. And that, that changes the way you sell insurance because then you truly identify what your purpose in life is, right? So, awesome. So, over to you, Sneha. We can either talk more about what we discussed earlier, which I shut you off, but we can also talk about how do you build a long-term brand is what we discussed earlier. Um. No, I think we just agreed to disagree, right? I mean, uh, uh, that's where we left it. Uh, but coming back to the other question, which is, uh, what do we need for long-term brand building, right? Um, see, I'm a big believer of being consistent. Could be because of the kind of brands I've worked with, the kind of you know um, uh, people I've interacted with. Uh, but I do feel that consistency needs a lot of internal persistency. I don't think being supremely persistent with your customers is a good idea, right? Um, if they associate with you, if they like you, right, then saying it a few times should land it. If it's not landing, then either they're not the right customer or you're not saying the right thing, right? Uh, that's the hard part of not being persistent because then you really need to figure out what will work. Uh, but if you want to be consistent as a brand, as a product, um, internal persistency is, is, is like a non-negotiable thing. I mean, we sell a very conceptually simple product called tea, right? I mean, this category has existed for I don't know how many hundreds of years, um, mammoth brands sitting in it. And despite being a young brand, we've been able to make a dent in, in the space. Why do we do that? Because the only thing we are super, super obsessed about is the consistency of our product. You buy a turmeric tea from me today, buy it 12 months down the line, buy it 24 months down the line, you will get the same cup of tea every morning, right? That's the promise. And that's not easy to deliver in a category like ours, right? Because produce is changing every year, right? Um, your uh, suppliers will have issues. Your factory will have humidity issues at times, right? So I think persistency in managing that 
uh, what we say as a brand, we are super obsessed about being consistent in every ad creative, every messaging, every banner, right? Um, it gets annoying at times, but I think that's, that's the hard part. And I think that's where brands need to put the persistency focus um, and hence deliver a consistent outcome to the consumer. So that's my take on it. So the thing is, I'm going to follow with, up with all of you guys for a Zoom demo of our platform and I'm going to be very persistent <laughs> because now I've learned we have to be persistent and there is a line which I remember, it says that money grows the trees of persistence. So I think over to you Neha, I think uh, working for Mahindra's, I think the values, culture play a very, very critical role and you've seen consistency of building even a new brand like Rise where the whole organization identifies with it, would love to know more about it, of how it's influenced the whole group. Thank you for that question, Vivek. So, 78 years back, the first ad that came out from Mahindra actually read Mahindra and Mohammed. This is a print ad that came out. And it actually didn't talk about any product as such. It talked about the purpose of the organization. And clearly the purpose was that we're looking at hiring people based on caliber and competency and we're open to hiring Hindus and Muslims. And it, it was a long ad, it had lots of things, I'm just kind of giving you the essence uh, of what was in that first ad that came out. And I'm kind of fast forwarding it to today where our purpose is Together We Rise. And the essence of the purpose of Together We Rise is really when we help others rise, we will rise. That's the essence of our purpose statement today. And I'm going to kind of go to a product that we recently launched, and I'm hoping this audience knows the product, XUV700. It's a big rage in the market, uh, and we're very proud of that. But just going back to the genesis of that product, the purpose of that product linked back to the purpose of the organization was how do we help the middle class rise to own a premium luxury vehicle at a non-premium cost. And so I'm just bringing back the consistency that every product that Mahindra is putting out there has a very clear, consistent message that is attached to its purpose. And that's what brings in the trust, that's what brings in the authenticity, that's what brings in the numbers. So 50,000 bookings in three hours for XUV700 and over 1 lakh bookings in 30 minutes for the new Scorpio N. So just kind of building on how you know, trust and consistency and not just consistency in the product offering but consistency in uh, really the, how you're creating that trust and multiple dimensions like we've all spoken about. And that becomes critical. However, if we didn't have the other side of the coin, the persistency, uh, you know, the, the messaging that we put out for XUV700, uh, you know, the whole tech focus, you know, bringing in a product that is tech focused within this price segment, within this category. And we went all out very persistently uh, on the digital front, uh, using personalization, using other avenues, uh, you know, leveraging multi-channel and a full funnel approach, we would not have achieved what we did. So it was really, you know, the trust and the relevance playing a role together uh, that we were able to. So I'm just kind of bringing this example as a live example on how both worked very, very well and, uh, you know, helped us achieve the success that we did. So just want to kind of... I'll just take one minute. <clears throat> See, I, I think consistency also is, a, the culture is a big factor of creating a consistency. And I'll, I'll take what Neha was speaking about. And I don't know how many of you noticed that she was telling XUV 700, not 700. Okay? There is a reason for that and correct me if I'm wrong. So all Mahindra successful brands, it started from Scorpio. So they had the O at the end, Scorpio, Bolero. Then if you ask any Mahindra guy, he would not say XUV 500, he would say XUV 500. So culturally that O is so ingrained 
that not a single Mahindra guy would say that as a 700, 500 or 300 or 400. It's all OO. That is correct. That is consistency also. Absolutely. You know, the, the brand language becomes extremely critical when we talk about consistency as well. So, thank you so much for that. Back yeah, to you. Anyway, really. I'm one of those people who are waitlisted. And the thing <laughs> is, I'm shifting from a Q7 to 700. So, you can imagine that I already feel there's an upgrade. <laughs> so, over to you, Deba. I think we are discussing that, you know, how do you build a brand long term and still stay relevant yet persistent? would love to know your views. We have little less time, so, but we've got to keep at least two minutes for the audience. So, a couple of minutes and then a couple of minutes, Alvin. Yeah, firstly, on a lighter note, I thank God I'm not from Tata Motors. Uh, I'm from Volta, so we'll talk about <laughs> cooling and comfort. Uh, but yeah, very interesting thoughts, I think, whatever I heard from all the panelists over here. Uh, I take back a lot. Uh, but I'll take a step back and I'll come back to the point of being consistent or being persistent. First and foremost, your business has to define what domain you want to occupy persistently. No? Because if you are into multiple businesses as a brand, it's all the more challenging for you to be persistent or be consistent, whichever way you want to look at it. So for us, it was to do with the fact that we came through generations of multiple businesses uh, as an organization. And organizations are also brands which you, which you buy in. So we, have to, we had to hive off many businesses to be consistent and to be persistent. Uh, we were into uh, multiple distribution businesses, we were into multiple project businesses, but today, in the last two decades, we focused on three things, cooling, comfort, convenience. If we can satisfy our customers in these three aspects of their life, professional or personal, B2B or B2C, I think we have a business to talk about. So whatever we offer to our customers revolve around these three things. The brand may have the strength to go much beyond these three Cs, but we, we prefer to stick to these three Cs. What we do is, we try to innovate around these three Cs. You know, innovation is also uh, one, one aspect of being consistent in your approach, because if you don't innovate, you'll die. And that's what we have heard from many panelists over here. You need to innovate. So I think consistency uh, should co go hand in hand with innovation. And uh, give an example of our bread and butter uh, business air conditioning. Uh, Perhaps you're sitting in this room and having the comfort of air conditioning because of the fact that somewhere some of our technicians worked on this comfort for all of you guys. But coming to the end user air conditioning, it's a very passive product. You don't even touch that product, right? Your, your remote is the aspect which you go through when you reach that product. So we asked the consumers, what do you want from air conditioner? And they said that, can it do something more than cooling? So it, we, we made it a point to innovate and make the air conditioner even heat for you, even keep you warm in winters, even keep you, you know, dehumidified in monsoons. Uh, so we were consistent with our offering. We didn't, we didn't go beyond our core promise of providing comfort, but we innovated through all weather ACs almost a decade back. And we reinvented the whole category of air conditioning. So these are the examples which I'm trying to showcase here where uh, being consistent and persistent has to come out of your business promise, has to come out of your business domain, which you occupy as a multifaceted business. Yeah, Arvind, last question to you. I think uh, especially with having quarterly pressures of being a listed company, how do you balance the short-term, long-term growth part of it? Well, I, I think it's a common uh, problem for um, most marketeers. Uh, having to balance, uh, you know, the resources are finite. Uh, but then how does one do brand building at the same time uh, deliver to this month's revenue or this quarter's revenue uh, through various tactics like, for example, uh, bottom funnel marketing? Uh, I, I think it's a question of balance. Uh, and it's about discovering the balance over time. Uh, because one, uh, it, it, we can't make a case of one without the other, right? In the end, marketing has to deliver on the business by building brands. Uh, there is no other way to go about doing it. Uh, because if you don't deliver on a business 
uh, with long term strong brands you're not building a sustainable business you are there only for a few quarters uh, so so how to discover that balance i think a lot of experimentation i think there's enough literature for example uh, you know others like les binet talk about 60 40 rule 60% top funnel marketing 40% uh, bottom funnel marketing, but I think it varies from category to category. Uh, we at McDonald's have own uh, did our own trial and error and discovered uh, roughly about 50-50 rule, wherein 50% of our consumer-facing resources are all on pure brand building, which is all about forging emotional connections with consumers and nothing to do with uh, buy this product r uh, today. Uh, whereas the balance 50% is on what we call as menu marketing uh, and uh, and sales building activities uh, which is let's say we have a spicy range we have a cheesy range uh, let's say we are talking about coffee uh, so so this is how we have discovered a healthy balance between building long term brands uh, as well as delivering on the business today uh, i think every marketer needs to experiment and find that sweet spot uh, and and be able to do both Sure. I think we can just get one question from the audience. Anybody would like to ask? Yes, my friend. Can somebody pass on the mic? Since Vivek has passed me the mic, you know, maybe Vivek, this is a question on your behalf itself. <laughs> okay. okay, so basically, I, th I think, you know, this is an interesting discussion around persuasion and, and being consistent. I have one question for everyone on the panel. Um, as we all know, marketing technologies, which we all deal with, are constantly evolving and very rapidly. So from your perspective, if you say, you know, for the next year or maybe the next couple of years, which are the one or two new marketing technologies, which probably you would like to pursue, the newer ones, which you probably feel can fuel your growth for the next couple of years. There is a technology called Profit Wheel. Vivek, this is not a plug. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let, me, let me plug it in for him. There is a technology called Profit Wheel, <laughs> which we tried, which we are using at Pesa Bazaar. And uh, I think it's, it's pretty cool and I think all of us should definitely try. Yeah, I must try that also because we, we heard about that before the, we entered the panel. Yeah. For us, it's going to be a seat. <laughs> but for us, it's going to be, uh, uh, to answer your question for us, because we are a multifaceted distribution uh, uh, segment, right? We, we have distributors who go sell to sub-dealers, so we don't have much of a horizon for our end users many a times. 60% of consumer durable sell through uh, distribution many a times and 40% sells through organized trade and modern retail and e-commerce and stuff like that. So for us, it's very important to tap the customer. So for us, the next level of, uh, you know, imbibing technology would be the best or the ideal CDP platform, uh, which, which is, which is uh, ever evolving today. And to get into uh, a fair amount of segmentation, which is much more micro than macro. Uh, so that's where we stand as a, as a category. Yeah. I, I think, yeah, I think for us, experience, customer experience is absolutely critical and paramount, uh, you know, and with the Teslas of the world coming in, that's kind of gone to another notch altogether. So how do we keep pace? So, and the multiple technologies that we could look at, but AI particularly, how do we embed AI across, uh, you know, all our journey points? How do we bring in more data from an AI perspective? And possibly from a machine learning perspective, how do we respond more accurately uh, without, uh, I would say, uh, overindulging with the customer? Considering privacy and stuff, right, today. <coughs> so. For um, us, uh, I would say, you know, uh, investments in ad fraud and brand safety is one of the key things. Uh, given the investments on digital and given that roughly 30 to 40, 50 percent of uh, digital spends are uh, sp spent in questionable areas. How to improve the ROI from digital spends and investing in ad fraud, brand safety. I think it's a bit of a journey for us. Uh, we are reasonably there, uh, but but uh, you know uh, the the quantum of fraud is huge, uh, and that's where you know for me the next uh, set of investments would be. For us, it is. Um you know, brands that are D2C first, 
as they grow, the whole D2C versus Amazon versus offline attribution is always a tricky bit. Um, and I don't think, I don't know if this, that solution exists in the market, but we have not figured that yet. So that's a big focus area. I think our problem is even bigger because we are a global brand. So we are not just trying to solve the channel problem, we are also solving the geography problem, right? I mean, a quick, quick commerce in India looks very different from online platforms in the US uh, versus the mom and pop shops in UK, right? So the complexity is different, but yes, this is, I think, one area where we as a business really want to get it right. So I think that's where we are. Okay, thanks everyone. Can I have a round of applause for all the panelists, please?